This conference will now be recorded. So guys, are you able to hear me? Guys, are you able to hear me? Can one of you please confirm? Okay. Thank you, guys. So the only three students, should we wait for others to join or should we get started? Because usually the session starts at 7.10 uh, in general, uh, maybe in 10 minutes from now in general. So that's the impression people might be in. So, uh, so what do you think, guys? Should we get started or should we wait for others? The call is yours. Okay, so let's get started here, guys. Uh, the session is already getting recorded. So let's have a quick recap and assuming that, you know, uh, just assume that while the recap is going on, the others also would join. Okay. So instead of what we have done is we have created test scenario. Okay. In JMeter. Okay. So we have created a soap test, a load test. Scalability test. So similarly, we can create other tests as well. Okay. Similarly, we have we can create other tests as well. So the standard thread group element, okay, which comes with JMeter, we haven't used it. Okay. We haven't used it because it has some limitations. Okay. I've seen a lot of JMeter experts go ahead and use the standard JMeter thread group element. Okay. Uh, but but for our discussion in our class, we haven't used it. Okay, so the reason for that is okay. Using this standard thread group element, we can define a ramp up. We can define a steady state, uh, but there is no way to define the ramp up. So this is the reason why. Okay, we went to plugin manager. Okay, and we have installed. We have installed. Okay, custom thread groups. We have installed something called custom thread groups and now okay and now we have an other element called ultimate thread group okay ultimate thread group we have this another thread group called ultimate thread group so using this ultimate thread group okay we can define the ramp up okay steady state and ramp down as well and we have seen uh, we can have multiple wrap ups, multiple ramp downs, and all that as well. We can do the multiple ramp ups, multiple ramp downs. We can have that kind of scenario as well using this ultimate thread group. <coughs> so, at today we have completely explored this option and also defined the so uh, uh, load test, uh, soap test, endurance test. We have defined this kind of test as well with the three scripts that we have. And we have included the pacing. I've shown you how to add the pacing as well and also executed the test so while while executing the test i have added multiple listeners okay can you tell me some of the listeners that i have added yesterday you can unmute yourself i have my speakers up so can you tell me if you remember uh, any listeners that we have added yes Raghu. aggregate report okay view results tree aggregate report okay. and then Anything else, Kev? Anything else that you remember from yesterday? Okay. Uh, simple data writer. Wonderful. That's what I was expecting somebody to do it. Simple data writer. Okay. A view results tree VRT. Okay. And there is something called summary report. Okay. So these are the things that we have, uh, that we have added. These are the three listeners that we have added yesterday. And the simple data writer, as the name suggests, it will write the results to an output file. Okay, it will write the results of the test to the output file. Okay, so there were two extensions for this output file. What were these two extensions? I wanted to save these results to an output file. The output file you have given a name, but what is the extension of that output file? What is that we have to give? Any idea, guys? Anything that you can remember? What should be the extension of the output file? There were two options. What were the two options, guys? Okay, 
should it be JMX sketch? The output file extension should be JMX. Please tell me yes or no. You can just say by or no. So you are writing the writing the results to an output file. The every file should have an extension. So the output file, uh, what should be the extension? It's not a JMX. Is it an XLS? Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, it's not an XLS, but what is it? What is it? It's a dot JTL file or a dot CSV. Both of them work. So yesterday when I executed it, I've added both of them. Usually it's not required. One of them is essential. Uh, one of them should suffice. But I've added both of them just to showcase that you can have either a JTL or CSV. Okay. JTL is what? JMeter. JMeter log. Sorry. JMeter text log. JMeter text log. Okay. PSV is comma separated value. Okay. It's a comma separated value. Okay. So let me open the yesterday's. Let me open the yesterday's script. Okay. And then look at where we have stored this CSV and JTL file. And let's see how we can make use of these files. Okay. Let's see how we can make use of these files. You see, these are the two things that we have added. Two data simple writers. Okay. One is dot JTL and one, one is dot CSV. Okay, so as you can see, I have stored it on the desktop in a folder called load test results. Let me copy this into your notepad file, the whole path. Okay, this is the path where I have stored on the desktop on the load test results. I have stored it as a dot CSV and another data simple writer. Okay, I have stored it as a JTL. Okay, I have stored it as a JTL. Okay, so let me go to the Folder. Okay, so uh, let me see. One is the JTL file. Okay, here is the JTL file, and here is the CSV file. Let me filter it based on the date so that I will have a clear understanding. Yeah, these are the two files uh, that we have created yesterday. I mean, as I ran the test, these two files were created. As I ran the test, the results were copied into this file and this one. So I've seen a lot of people uh, outputting it into a dot CSV. Because dot CSV, you can open it in an Excel sheet as well and see what has happened. Okay, you can open it in an Excel sheet and you can see what has happened. Okay, uh, that is an advantage of having a dot CSV. But other than that, I don't see any advantage. Okay, <clears throat> but I see a lot of JVM experts they prefer to be the dot JTL file. Okay, so Kumar. I can open this in an Excel sheet and see the results. Is there a way I can open this JTL file from any of the tools and see what is there? What do you think that I can open this file in an uh, uh, Excel sheet and open it? If I wanted to open this file, uh, this file contains a similar information but in a different format. If I wanted to open this, do you think is there a way for me to open this .jtl file? Guys? What do you think? What, which tool should I use to open this? Or give it a guess. What could be the tool that I can use to open this .jpf file? What do you think? Do you think will there be a tool? You can for opening this. I have an Excel sheet. For opening this .csv, I have an Excel sheet. .jtl. What do you think? Which tool can I use to open that file? Okay. Let Let's investigate what JTL means, guys. Dot JTL means what is what is the full form? J meter text log file. Now give give it a guess which tool I can use to open this file. Which tool I can use to open this file? Just give it a wide guess. At least by looking at the extension. J meter itself. Okay. J meter itself. Okay. Let me show you how to open this file. Now I am not running the test. What I will do is I'll add a listener. I'll add a listener called view results tree and go to browse, go to browse and go to the folder where you wanted to, where your JTL file is there. And then you see this is the JTL file. I would like to open it. Double click on it and you will be able to open it and see what exactly is there. You can click on each of those uh, log and then see the request response results and everything. Okay. Are we clear this? Okay. We could open the JTL file. But not in an Excel sheet, but in the JMeter itself using the view results tree. 
okay there is one new visual stream wherein it was added for for the execution to uh, to monitor the errors but this view result tree after the whole test is done just to look at what is there in the jpl file you can oh, you can browse okay you can browse and you can open it and you can see it okay so this is how you can see a dot jpl files so let me delete i don't want to view results tree i'm deleting this case i'm deleting this one but i'm just uh, just wanted to showcase that you can open the jpl file as well as okay so <clears throat> Now this .csv or .jtl file, the output files, it's not just to open and see, but we can do some wonderful things with that. So what I would like to do is using this .jtl or uh, .csv file, okay, I would like to create, I would like to create a dashboard report, okay, a dashboard report. Okay, so as today while discussing, okay, what I have told you is, okay, this summary report, aggregate report, it's all cleaned up because I have closed it and opened it. Okay, so if I have executed the test, you know, this summary report comes and I can save that report using the same table data, I'll be able to save that particular report. But only that is the only outcome, only that is the only report that we have. Okay, and that's not good enough. Guys. That's the only report that we have and that's not good enough. We need to give more information and that more information is available in this dashboard report and using these files using these two files. I can create this dashboard report because because whatever the report or whatever the data of the report that comes through this aggregate report and the summary report that's not good enough for me to submit to the client i need to give more information to the client and that more information can be obtained from this dot jtl or dot csv file and how can i do it by creating a dashboard by creating a dashboard okay so watch carefully how do i create the dashboard report dashboard report can be done from the can be created from the command line okay from the command line okay watch carefully how do i do it okay okay so get, go to the jmeter bin folder go to the jmeter bin folder okay in the jmeter bin folder open the command line okay just to say go to the path where you want and just type command line again okay, telling you guys go to the path where you want okay you went to the bin folder now you wanted to open this bin folder in the command line you wanted to open this bin folder in the command line click here and simply say command line obviously a command line will be opened but not only the command line will be opened but in the command line bin folder will be uh, it directly navigates to the bin folder it directly navigates to the bin folder watch carefully if i just say command line you see it went to b apache jmeter apache jmeter 5.1 and bin folder. You see the bin folder has opened in the command line. Or you can just simply open the command line, simply open the command line, and then you navigate to the D folder. How do you do it? C dot dot C dot dot C C D to D drive. Okay. So C D to D drive or it is C D to D. Okay, D drive, C D to D drive, then again say C D Apache underscore j meter okay j meter okay mm, capital apch underscore capital j meter okay then it's correct right underscore okay c capital apach is there something missing is j meter the system cannot find oh we are still in the d drive it says d drive right okay CD. No, how can I change it to C drive? D drive, then. but it's, it should be the other way down. Okay, hang on one second. No, this should be the other way down. Why doesn't it go to the D drive? Can, can you please tell me the command to change the directory? Guys, anybody? I hardly use this uh, 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 command line. Okay, or simply say, okay, copy this path. Okay. Complete simply paste CD and then paste. Okay. Oh, it's not moving. 
Okay. Anyway, so I'll, I'll talk about that later, but I, all I wanted is you have to go to this particular folder. Okay, you have to go to this particular folder. Now you are there in the pin directory. Make sure you are there in the pin directory. And now watch carefully, guys. J meter. Okay. And now what you wanted to create? <coughs> what you wanted to create? You wanted to create a dashboard report. For that, you have to just say hyphen G. Hyphen G means you wanted to create a report. Hyphen G. <coughs> and hyphen G. And now where where is your dot csv file it is there on your desktop and so and so path okay copy that path okay watch carefully guys first i have done i've i've written a command called jmeter and hyphen g hyphen g is to write create the create the dashboard report dashboard report of what okay which which file dashboard report of which file the file which is there here either jtl or csv you can take any of it i take the jtl Okay, picked. Okay, so what you are doing now, you are creating the dashboard report for this file. Okay, and once it is created, you store that output. You store that output. Okay, you store that output where? Okay, in the same folder. In the same folder. Okay, you store that output in the same folder and give a name to the folder where you wanted to store. Let's say it is load test. Okay, this is a load test results, and you can give some some indication of timestamp. Today is 31st Jan, so 30, uh, 01, 31. Okay, so look at the command. So jmeter hyphen g and the file, okay, the JTL file, give the complete path. Okay, p user three desktop load test scenario and then the file. Okay, give the complete path of the file for which you wanted to create the dashboard report. And that dashboard, dashboard report that is created, you need to store somewhere. So you say hyphen zero, hyphen O, not zero, hyphen O, whatever the dashboard report uh, created, that should be outputted to where? Give the path where you wanted to and give the folder in where you wanted the output report to be. And click enter. And click enter. <clears throat> okay, now the dashboard report is created. Now the dashboard report is created. Okay, let's investigate what I have written here, guys. First, uh, first, let's see the dashboard report is created. Yes, you see Lotus results 01003. So, what did I type on the command line? See, first, okay, on the command line, okay, on the command line, go to the bin folder, go to the bin folder, okay, from the bin folder, from the bin folder, run this command, okay, run this command. So, what is the command, okay, jmeter, jmeter, hyphen g, hyphen g. And then the file, okay, the JTL file. The JTL file is there in a particular folder, so you have to give the complete, complete path of the JTL file. Uh, either you can say go to the properties and then get the complete path of the JTL file, okay? Copy, okay, and then the file name. It's not the, just the file name, but the complete path as well because the JMeter doesn't know where is this file located in. So it is located in so and so folder. So the complete file file you have to give. So I wanted to create a dashboard report for this particular file. JMeter doesn't know where the path is, so you have to give the path as well. Now, once the dashboard report is created, you have to output it. How do you do? Hyphen zero and output it to where? Where? Which folder? Okay. You, uh, you can give whichever folder you want. So I'm giving so and so folder. Okay, and then output should be in the folder called whatever it is, load test results or whichever folder you want is appropriate, you can give that. Okay, so this is what the command that can be used to, to create the dashboard for post case. Okay, so are we clear, guys? Are we clear with this command? I'm sending it on the chat window. Are we clear with this command? Okay, all of you get are we are we clear with this command? Okay, so now the dashboard report has been created. Okay, dashboard report has been created, and you see this is the dashboard report that 
we have created. Look at the timestamp as well. 131.2020. So are we clear guys, all of you? Are we clear all of you? Okay. So there are totally nine students in the class. Are we clear? Or should I go over again? Okay, it's just a simple command that you run. It is just a simple command that you run from the JMeter bin folder. Give the file name. Okay, just say JMeter hyphen G and give the file name and where you wanted the uh, report to be, where you want the report to be stored, give that part. Okay, by giving hyphen O output. Okay, once you create the dashboard report, the output should be stored in so and so file. Okay, and create the dashboard report for this JPL file. How do you say? JMeter hyphen G. Okay, now <coughs> just to show that, okay, the, 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 for, for creating the dashboard report, you need not have to use the JTL file. You can use the CSV file as well. Okay, just to prove that point, I'll, I'll also uh, run the command again. Okay, so JMeter hyphen G. Okay, and Okay, so we have created the dashboard report using the JTL file. Now I'll create the dashboard report using the CSV file. Okay. So I need the whole path of that particular this thing as well. Okay, so. dot csv okay hyphen o okay and then give the output where, where you want the output to be stored okay no test results i'll say csv underscore csv okay thank you okay so you're given okay so this one was created using the jtl file so let me re rename this as jtl Okay, so and this one is created using the CSV file. You can create, you can create the dashboard report either using the JTL or using the CSV. So when you open it, both of them contains the same files. When you open it, both of them contains the same. Okay, let's open one of these and see what's there in the dashboard report. But so far, is it clear, guys? All of you? So far, is it clear, all of you? Yeah. So let's open this dashboard report. Both of them contains the same dashboard report, guys. Okay. Because both of them have the same output, but different extensions. One is JTL, one is CSV, but they have they are the output for the same test. So using both these files, I have created both these results. So both of them should be same. I'll open one of them and show it to you. Okay. You can open this in a Google Chrome or if this is an HTML document, you can open that in a Google Chrome or an Excel sheet. Okay, so I'll try to open it in the Google Chrome. <coughs> and here is how the dashboard report looks like. Okay, wonderful guys. So this test was started at 8.42 yesterday and ended at 8.48. We have ran the test only for six minutes. And using this file, I've created the dashboard report. Okay. And so uh, you can ignore this part, guys. It's not of much significance. Otherwise, you can go to uh, internet and see what is this application performance index. Okay, it's not of much significance. What is of much significance is this particular statistics here. Okay, this particular statistics. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, to see. Okay, the complete report clearly. Okay, here the report. Okay, now. So the whole report is okay. And one guys. So this is the application index. This is not what I wanted to see. Ah, this is what it is. Statistic. This is what I wanted to see. Okay. You see, large home page, large home page. So okay. So how much? How many samples were sampled for long for large home page? 42 samples. Okay. Is there any error? No, no not even a single error in that 42 samples. So how many in that six minutes? 42 times this home page has been executed and there is no error. Average response times is what? Six seconds, close to six seconds. This is in milliseconds. So you see the response times is in milliseconds. This is in milliseconds, so approximately 6.1 seconds. Minimum is five. 
maximum is 7.5 minimum is 5.8 98 percentile is what people will be interested i've already told you what is the 90 per 98 percentile response type in my low runner class so this is 6.3 is a 95 for 90th response type 95 percentile is 6.7 99 percentile is 7.5 okay and also you have given the throughput as well throughput is 0.11 okay so for every second 0.11 transactions is executed which means that for every 10 seconds one transaction is getting executed how many you can see the network as well okay receive what is the speed uh, 6.8 kilobytes per second is received and 0.67 uh, is what is sent to kilobytes per second of data has been sent and 6.8 kilobytes of data has been received. so this is what a basic statistics for the report shows you it gives you the maximum minimum average 90 percentile 90 percentile for each and every transaction for each and every transaction okay so you see and not only that this transaction launch is made out of multiple uh what do you say embedded resources multiple embedded resources for each embedded resource as well, okay, it will give you the maximum minimum amount. You see, this large transaction is made out of these many embedded resources. Okay, how many? 15 of them. So for each of them, it will give you the response times as well. Ideally, when you add all of it, it should give you that much. Okay, so you can look at it and see which embedded resource is taking a lot of time. Okay, you can report to the developer that 12, okay, and then zero is taking a lot of time you can see what is this zero and 12 actually uh, rep uh, um, indicates and you can tell to the developer saying that these are the two culprits which are taking a lot of time okay and then this is the second transaction it has how many embedded resources nine of them okay on how many resources nine of them and then uh, for this one the average is nine and you can look at like what each one of them what each one of them gives you and by the way, when you add it, add all of it, it might or it might not uh, add up to this because some of the embedded resources will be in parallel. So if everything is in sequential, so when you add, it should add up to that. But some of them might run in parallel, which means that when you add, whatever the thing that you have added could be more than this, could be more than that, this could be more than this. Okay. When you add all of that, okay, it could be more than this because some of them could be in sequential, some of them could be in parallel. Okay, we have total nine transactions or 10 transactions we have executed for all the 10 transactions. It is giving you the report very clearly. Okay, like this. Are you clear that all of you? Okay, you can filter it. Okay, you can do the filtering part and all that required as well. Okay, so you can do the filtering on any one of them. Okay, uh, when I said sorry, not filtering. Okay, so you can, uh, you can, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, what is the word? Sort out. Okay, you can sort out uh, based on whichever you want. You wanted to see which of these samples have the highest 90 percentile response times. You can you can you can uh, sort it out, and then it will show you which one has the highest. Okay, which one has the highest. You can sort on the label so that you know it will give you on the transaction wise if you are sorting it on the label. Okay. Okay, and then uh, you have the errors and top errors by samplers. Unfortunately, in this, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't have any errors, but if I have any errors, it will to tell you uh, what kind of errors as well and how many errors and the top five errors as well. It will show. Okay, so this is what a dashboard main page looks like, and you have a lot of charts inside this dashboard as well, which we will go ahead and look at one by one. Okay, so first let's look at the chart. There are three kinds of charts. One is overtime, one is throughput, one is responses. And then each one of them, you have multiple charts. First, we will go through all the charts which are there in overtime. Then we will go through all the charts which are there in throughput. Then we will go through all the charts which is there in the response times. First, we will go through the overtime. Okay. So, <coughs> response overtime. Okay. Response overtime. Response time over the six minutes. How many, how many minutes I have executed the test case? approximately six minutes i have executed the test i have started at 8 42 ended at 8 48 so approximately for six minutes okay i have executed this test in the six minutes how the response times were uh, uh, placed out in the six minutes okay it's going to show you for all the transactions 
it's going to show you for all the transactions for all the 10 transactions and also the embedded resources okay now <clears throat> what i will do is okay so this graph will be miss uh, i mean uh, it's very hard to read because you have so many so many transactions and it's kind of hard to understand when there are so many transactions so what i will do is i'll filter this graph for only one transaction okay how do i filter it go to the tools here and just say hide all samples hide all samples and let me look at only one transaction which is launch transaction click on this okay click on this now i am looking at only one transaction which is launch transaction and i did this filtering so that i'll be able to explain to you clearly what is happening you can filter it for the ones which has high response times you can filter it for only those transactions and send it to your client okay okay you can always save this only you want only this graph you can save this graph as well okay just say save as a png and you will be able to save this graph and paste it wherever you want this graph in a document or whichever report you're creating or wherever you are reporting the wherever you are creating the report you can save this over there okay you can always save this particular graph not only this graph any graph you are looking at you can always save that graph okay now let's try to understand this graph as to what it is you see as soon as you have started the test as soon as you've started the test at 842 okay the response time shooted up to 7.5 okay seconds initially the response times when you have initially started it is 5 5.7 immediately for a fraction of a second it shooted to 7.5 then it came back to uh, came, uh, came back to around 5 or 5.7 or something like that and then there was a wrap up going on during that wrap up there is the response time slowly is increased okay and then there, there is some activity there is a spike over here and then okay so more or less you can see that you know over this period of six minutes the response times initially spiked but more or less it was around 6.1 second yeah there is but there were some spikes maybe there was a lot of load going on around the time but other than that and you also see okay there are no dots here which means that there is not much data so during this time maybe maybe my script was executing a pacing time or something like that think time or a pacing time i'm guessing it's going to be a pacing time okay i've given a pacing of two seconds or something uh two minutes or uh, i think i've given a pacing of like let's say two minutes or 120 seconds so that 120 seconds there are no no activity there are no dots which means that there is no activity and then suddenly all of them started executing so there is some activity and then there is no activity and suddenly there is some activity but here you see the response times there are no spikes okay it's kind of smoothened out but here the response times are high maybe the ramp up is aggressive usually if the ramp up is aggressive okay which means that you are trying to ramp up more users with less time this kind of indication happens but the spike is not a huge spike only a single line okay but the spike is very very i mean uh, the spike is there for a longer period of time then you have to increase your ramp up back typically that's what it means you are aggressively ramping up okay but more or less it is in two seconds over a period of time you see uh, around eight point uh, after you start you started the test at 842 around 846 you wanted to see how the response times were they were around 6.2 seconds at 848 how the response times were they are again around 6.25 or 6.2 somewhere over so you wanted to see the response times over the time this is what it is so in this graph what you wanted to look for is is there any time period where the response times are abnormally no, uh, abnormally high okay let's say you have run the test for one hour throughout that one hour the response times were around 6.2 or 6 but there is a patch of 10 minutes or 15 minutes the response times were let's say 10 seconds or 15 seconds okay so you wanted to investigate what is happening around that time okay so that is what you ideally look for in this kind of graphs okay so let's say you have run the test for one hour and for whole of one hour it is around 6.2 seconds but in that one hour maybe around 10 minutes or something the response times were really high so if if you see that kind of uh, uh, that kind of behavior then you have to investigate what has happened in those 10 minutes and why the response times were abnormally high over that so that kind of things you look for in this graph okay the response times over time are you clear guys understood how to look at this graph or what to make out of this graph are you clear
is it possible to save export the statistic table uh, um, i think you can take the screenshot you are saying about this table right i don't know because i never did it and you see there was no no option here at the right hand corner had it had an option called save it as png it would have been better but i don't see any option to be honest okay so i don't see a, i don't see how you can save it maybe you can take a screenshot of it and send it to it or maybe you can send this html file uh, to your client where you know uh, who is looking at it or the same data that you're seeing okay the same data that you're seeing over here you can have the data in that aggregate report as well so you can save that aggregate report file into a table and you can send that okay but you wanted to save this i don't think it is possible you have to take a screenshot of it and then save it i think that's the only option you can unzoom it and then take a screenshot of it and you can send it i think that's the only option but i don't think you know you have an option of saving it into a notepad or saving it as an image i don't think you have an option here no have it explored and as far as look directly there is no option okay but is there a workaround i never explored it okay because we send directly this html document to the developer to have a look at it okay that is a possibility but i don't think there is uh Dima, there is no way to there might be a way i think there is a way to create the dashboard report in an excel sheet okay uh, i was looking at it uh, maybe there could be a way okay so uh, it's a good question but people usually don't do it okay but let's see you know if there is a way to create a dashboard uh, from the uh, from this one yeah i know uh, nobody does it actually divakar i haven't seen anybody doing it so never explored it create a dump create a thread dump create an html report oh okay you have you have here can you see this divakar okay so that's what i remember do i remember exploring it okay you see that dot csv or jpl file you browse okay but here you have to give the user dot properties file which you have to okay see the worker so uh, i i have this uh, xml i mean i have this jpl file in this one okay you see this is a jpl file for which i have to create the report you have to give the user properties file this user properties file is available in your jmeter bin folder okay so browse to the jmeter bin folder okay so okay so in the jmeter bin folder uh, i'm sure you would have jmeter bin folder you have something called user properties file you see here you have to give the user properties file and output directory where you wanted to store the results you wanted to store the results in uh, let's let's say i will create a folder okay so new folder okay via gui report via gui mode okay and then open okay just say generate the report so you see report created so let me go to the folder okay reports gui mode and then you can create it from there as well okay are you clear divakar okay from gui mode also you can create the report as you have seen here okay so you will have the same uh, same data same reports everything is same because the input file is same okay so divakar is it clear now this now i created using the gui mode hang on hang on hang on so divakar are you there divakar divakar i just shown you how to create the dashboard report from the gui mode as well so maybe divakar left for the day or maybe he is not listening he has asked the question and he is not responding okay okay divakar yeah so all you have to do is just go here okay go to tools and you say generate html report give the dot csv file where you wanted to store give the output file okay and then one minute 
question answer. Uh, okay, and then all it requires is a user properties file, and user properties file will be available in the JMeter bin folder. Okay, so you can use that JMeter uh, bin property or uh, user properties file. Okay, so this is possible. This is possible to create the dashboard reports from there. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the, 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 the graphs that we are looking at. Okay, let's go through the graphs today, guys. We will go through all the graphs today, even though it takes a little bit of time. We'll go through all the graphs and we will cover all the graphs. Okay, so now we have we have already looked at how the how the response times are spread over these six minutes. We have already looked at. Okay, now. Okay, we look at response times percentiles over the period of time. Okay, it's a wonderful graph. We'll have a look at this as well. But you know, there's too many, too much of data. Let me let me clear all the data and then uh, uh, okay, show you okay, uh, hide all the data okay, and then show you only 90 percentile. Okay, show you how the 90 percentile. It will show you okay during the elapsed time how the 90 percentile response times are spread over this time period. Okay, spread over this six six minutes. How the 90 percentile is there? How the 95 percentile is there? Spread over the six minutes and how the 99 percentile. Okay, spread over the six minutes. It's not of much help to honor. To be honest, guys, it's not of much help. This graph I haven't used this. Okay, so uh, active threads is the number of users. Okay, how the number of users are there? Okay, so you see. Uh, initially, there were only 2.5 users. Okay, so as I'm increasing, then it became to 15 users. Okay, so it's going to show you for each of those scripts. So I wanted to see only for the cat script. Let's assume. Okay, so for the cat script, slowly you have ramped up, and then there were five users. Okay, which are there for uh, cats cat script. Okay, we have run the test with only five users. So for the dog script and active uh, threads are nothing but users guys. Threads are nothing but active threads are nothing but users. So let me show you for the dog. Okay, so for the dog again, we have executed with five users itself. Okay, and this is how it has ramped up and we have a steady state and this is how it has ramped up. Okay, and for the fish script again, we have executed with the five, five users itself. So this is the last test. If you remember, we have executed. We thought that you know 15, 10, 25, 45 users were very high. So we have executed the second test with only five users. Okay, for each of them. Okay, for cat script, dog script, and fish script. We wanted to see how the users have ramped up and steady state and all that. You can look it up from this graph. Okay, and this is your six minutes of your execution. Okay. By throughput over time, here you can be able to see what is the input and what is the output. You see, bytes received per second, bytes sent per second. Okay, this is what is the output. How many bytes you have received per second? Usually, okay, as the number of users are increasing, the the the, the throughput or the bytes received should increase as well. Okay, as the number of users are decreasing, the bytes received should be decreased. Okay, and latencies okay so this is an important graph guide latencies okay so i need some time to explain this latency at first i need to tell you what is latency in jmeter terms okay and then i'll be able to explain the latencies but let me take a break and after the break i'll tell you what is a latency it will take 10 to 15 minutes for me to explain what is a latency and this 10 to 15 minutes is very very important guys in your interview, you can talk about these concepts that I am talking about. So very carefully watch. After the break, don't leave. After the break, 10 minutes is extremely important. I'll take a 10 minutes break. So as soon as I come back from the break, 12 minutes of break, I'll take. Once I come back from the break, uh, 10 minutes is very, very important. Very, I'll cover what is a latency. I'll cover something called a network buffer time and uh, 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 TTBF, time to first buffer. Okay, and network time and connection time. Okay, so very, very important. Stay back and look at it, and we will be able to look at this graph. Once I explain that, what is a connection time, what is a latency, what is a network time, what is the time to first perform, what is download time, then I'll be able to explain these two graphs connection time over period and then the latency over time. Okay, so stay back then. Uh, expect, expect the class to go for after the break 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. <laughs>
guys are you able to hear me guys are you able to hear me one of you please confirm yes kumar yeah thank you yes yes sorry for a longer wait i just had a, a certain things to wrap it up so i'm really sorry for that so uh, well so uh, what is latency in terms of load uh, j meter okay what is it showing up here okay let's try to understand this very clearly it will take a little bit of time to understand okay let me go through the ppt uh, it will take 10 to 15 minutes for me to explain this latency guys watch here carefully okay <clears throat> Okay, so let's go through this diagram here, guys. Okay? We'll carefully understand. Just ignore this heading. This heading has no uh, significance in, uh, in, in in this term. In the, I mean, in this context here. Okay. Okay. Let's assume this is the client side activity and this is the server side activity. Watch here carefully, guys. So here is my client. Okay. Here is my server. And I'll track the client side activity over here and server side activity over here. Okay, watch carefully. Uh, I'm not able to look at the chat window, guys. If there is anything that you have any questions, issues, okay, uh, interrupt me. Okay, speak and interrupt me because I'm not able to look at the chat window. I'll not be able to see what you're typing uh, right now at this point of time. So, uh, but if you have something, go ahead and speak. Okay, now carefully observe what happens when a request is sent from the client to server. What exactly happens? Let's try to understand. Okay. Now you see, I wanted to explain this concept using the Mark's example. Okay, so Mark is calling his friend. Okay, after a long time, who happened to be uh, his ex-girlfriend, let's assume, or maybe a friend who happened to be his girl. Okay, happened to be just a girl. Okay, let's assume that. Okay, now you see, what does he do? Okay, Mark forgets her contact number because it's been a while that he didn't spoke to her so obviously he didn't he, he cannot remember her number but these days you know people go to facebook or linkedin or maybe some uh, social networking site or maybe look at look at in the whatsapp groups or maybe they call a common friend to uh, get the number uh, but uh, let's say probably 15 years back okay when cell phones are not in uh, so much use okay people used to have something called a telephone directory do you remember that guys in India they used to call it as a yellow pages and elsewhere they call it from different names. Okay, so you 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 kind of understand uh, or you kind of heard something like that a telephone directory or yellow pages or something like that. Yeah, in India they specifically used to call it as yellow pages. Okay, so get it yellow. But you in US I think they call it as uh, telephone directory or something like that. Okay, so wherein they have the numbers of the whole city. I mean. Whoever is there in the complete city, they have the numbers of every single person over there. Okay, you you know that there is something like yeah. telephone directory that exists, exists. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The B okay. BSNL people will provide. BSNL people used to provide that, but in other countries also in US also they used to be a telephone directory. Okay, so what what he does is okay he goes and looks up her number from the telephone directory. Okay, so telephone directory in those days is something very uh, uh, on the alphabetical order. It lists uh, lists out every single person who is there. Okay, in that city. Okay, so let's say if I wanted the number of Kumar Gupta, you can go there and search in K or G, and it will be listed out there. Okay, so like that. So he will go to the telephone directory and then pull the number over there. So so. <clears throat> Now, now, when you say www.facebook.com, okay, it doesn't know which web server the request should go to. So what, what my client will do, it will send the send the request to something called a DNS server. It will some, it will send the request to something called a DNS server, which is domain name system. DNS stands for what? Domain name system DNS server. Okay. So then everybody is listening. There are eight students in the class. Everybody is listening, guys. Can you just say yes? I just wanted to know that everybody is uh, everybody is got back. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So now, what happens if the, the client doesn't know where to send the request to? 
he doesn't know what is this facebook.com so what it will do first it will send the request to the dns server dns server is more like your telephone directory telephone directory contains the phone numbers of every single person who is living in that city so dns server contains every single ip address of every single website out there every single website which is there in the world for every single website you know it has the entries it has the entries so the telephone directory what is it contains you have a name and you have the phone number dns server also it contains the similar information what is the app facebook.com what is the ip address google.com what is the ip address linkedin.com what is the ip address isha training solutions.org what is the ip address okay so type um, uh, newyorktimes.com what is the ip address so for every single website out there it has the ip addresses just like your telephone directory name and the phone number here the name of the website here it doesn't contain the phone number it contains the ip address ip address of what the web server to which the request needs to be sent are we clear this are we clear this all of you are we clear yeah okay just like your telephone directory contains the name and phone number here it contains the website and the ip address of the web, uh, web server to which the request needs to be sent now what happens facebook.com somewhere here okay uh, in the dns entry it says facebook.com okay facebook.com okay the ip address is let's say 192 so blah 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 192.168 okay so let's say the ip address is 195.168.0.1 okay so now now okay now what will what what it will do as as the request is sent to the dns in uh, dns server dns server will send this ip address back to the client what is that ip address 195.168.0.1 now my client knows that the request needs to go to this ip address my client knows that the request need to be go to this address so now my client will send that request to that ip address which is 195.168.0.1 so the ip address of the web server is 195.168.168.0.1 okay 0.1 okay so the request goes to that web server because there are hundreds and millions of web servers out there which has different ip addresses so how does the client know which web server the request needs to go to so it will, it will send the request to dns server dns server will send the ip address of that particular uh, that particular that particular website and now the client knows that the request needs to go to that web server web server which has the ip address 198.195.168.0.1 okay just in the just like in the city there are millions of phone people have the phones and everybody has their phone number by looking at in the telephone directory you get the phone number of your friend and you will call that number so that you can talk to her or him okay are you clear this all of you are you clear all of you so then definitely there's some time which takes for the client to send the request to the dns server and dns server respond back with the ip address that is time is nothing but dns resolution time what is the time yet dns resolution time you are looking up you see dns look up you are looking up for what looking up for the ip address ip address of what the web server of the facebook in this case so this time that is taken for you to get the ip address is called the dns resolution time dns resolution okay now what mark will do he will take the phone and he, he got the phone number he dials that number okay he dials that number okay the network what are the network people okay will send the uh, send the request to the network network uh, network i mean the the, the the tower will send that uh, uh, call to the uh, to the lady that uh, mark is speaking to so there is the connection which happens okay the girl receives the call now there is a connection that is being established with from mark and his ex girlfriend now there is a connection that is established between mark and his girlfriend what does mark do he, he took the number he dialed that number and the lady has left the call so now there is a connection that has happened between mark and okay that lady okay similarly similarly okay a request similarly a request is sent okay a request kind of request is sent to that ip address okay we already have the ip address right 192.168.0.1 so this client established a connection with this web server it 
to establish a connection between web to, uh, for, to this web server before it sends the request it needs to establish the connection before mark speaks to that lady he needs to dial and the connection needs to be established the connection is established by your network uh, guy maybe uh, maybe by your uh, whatever the network okay that you are using uh, in us i can't remember uh, can't remember the companies voltage not voltage sprint what is the companies that you use in us guys what is the telephone companies that you use uh, at and at and when i not okay so uh, wonderful okay at and whenever those guys will establish the connection between mark and the okay similarly here the connection needs to be established between the client and the server and that time that time is what we call it as a connection time you see from the client the request is sent to the server for 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 establishing the connection for what for establishing the connection with the web server and then that time to establish the connection that is what is the connection time phone also there is some time it takes to establish the connection first you will get the ringtone right a dial tone okay that during the dial tone and then the lady lifts up the call whatever the time that you spend okay uh, or while it is dialing that is nothing but the connection time when you are speaking here also there is some time that needs to that time that is taken for the client to establish the connection with the server okay now once the connection is established now the connection has been happening between client the connection is established between client and server now client can send whatever it wants and the server can send whatever it wants to the client because there is a connection that is established between client and server and the time that is taken to establish the connection is called the connection time okay if the connection time is long then there might be a connection queue or there is some issue with your networking cards okay or your let's say typically there is a network card that will be there which will be established which will be used for establishing the connection if the connection time is more then you need to talk to your developer to see what is the problem it could be with your network cards or it could be that you know there are a lot of requests happening and there is not enough number of connections which are there on the web server you see if there is one more client here if there is one more client okay so this is me let's say this is kumar browsing the facebook okay and it's and he is trying to establish the connection with this facebook web server let's say this is this is mark okay this is mark again he is trying to establish the connection with facebook he is also browsing facebook okay so what does the web server do it will create one more connection one more connection so that the 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 the, the, the uh, I mean, the communication can happen between Mark and the web server of uh, Facebook. And then, let's say there is uh, there is Tethi who is browsing Facebook simultaneously. Again, one more connection can be established. So there could be a lot of connections, maybe 250, 256 parallel connections that can happen on the same web server. Again, um, in the settings of web server, you can define how many connections, how can you, how many maximum connections that can be allowed on the web server. Okay, if the connection is taking a lot of time, then you need to talk to the developer to see if they can increase the number of connections or there is an issue with the networking card. So uh, you can talk to it and then you, that bottleneck can be resolved in that sense. Okay, if the connection time is taking a lot of time, the bottleneck time, if the bottleneck is there with the connection and it could be with the network card or it could be the maximum number of connections allowed by web server or it could be something else. But you can report to the developer saying that the connection time is long. Usually it will be in milliseconds, guys, you know, 0 0.01 seconds, 0 0.1 seconds, something like that. Okay, so this is what is the connection time. Are we clear so far, guys, everybody? Are we clear so far, everybody? Okay, now, now, okay, so there is one waiting for the time, guys, who is uh, waiting for the name? Who is that? It says waiting for the name, uh, 280006. Who is that? Can I know the name, please? Any idea? Okay. Just type your name in the chat window, guys. Okay. Now, 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 you see, once the connection is established between these two, the request can be sent and the response you can receive. You see, once the connection is established between Mark and his girlfriend, you know, the communication can happen. Mark can say hello and that lady can say hello. They can greet each other and all that. So, greeting each other is more like an initial HTTP. So the client has sent the initial HTTP request. You see, uh, the client has sent an initial HTTP request and the server has sent that acknowledgement saying that, yeah, the connection is established and I'm able to receive this initial HTTP 
request. I have received it, okay? I have received this HTTP request. That's what is there. You see, initial HTTP request is sent, and the server immediately sends the acknowledgement. Acknowledgement, I think, okay, I have received this HTTP request. This acknowledgement is not the response, guys. This acknowledgement is not the response. It is just the server telling the client that, yes, I have received your request. That doesn't mean that it's a response. Client, okay, client may be intending for the launch page of Facebook. What is the client asking here? The launch page of Facebook. What is the response that we got? The response is not the launch page of Facebook. We simply got the acknowledgement saying that, yes, I have received your request, which is for the launch page. Okay, yes, I have received your request for the launch page. But that's not the actual response, but that's not the actual response. So initially, initial HTTP request is sent from the client saying what? I want the launch page and server immediately send the acknowledgement saying that, yes, I have received your request. That doesn't mean that it is giving you the launch page. It is just intimating you that I have received your request. That is what is what, what we call it as network type to first buffer. What is it? What is called called network type to first buffer? If this time is more, if this time is more, typically there is some issue with the network. If this time is more, there is some issue with the network. Are we clear, guys? Are we clear? Okay. This is not the actual response, guys. This is not the actual response. Client is just telling that yes, I have received your request. So if this time is more, you'll see client said sorry. Client has sent the initial HTTP request, server has sent acknowledgement. Server is just saying that, yeah, I have received your request, hold on, I will, I will serve your request. Okay, so if this time is more, then definitely there is some issue with the network, okay, that you need to address. Okay, if this time is more, there is some issue with the DNS server. If this time is more, there is some issue with the connections. Number of connections can be increased or network card can be changed and all that. If this time is more, then definitely there is some issue with the network. Your bandwidth of that particular, uh, 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 your bandwidth needs to be increased of that particular network needs to be increased. Okay, are we clear guys, all of you? Are we clear so far? This is very, very important. If you're gonna talk about all this in the interview, right? So you, your job is guaranteed, that's I'm telling you. Okay, what is the analysis you have done? You can look, you can talk about all this DNS resolution time, connection time, network type, the first buffer and all. Okay. Now, now what happens? Okay, the client has already sent the request. Okay, now you see Mark speaks everything that he wanted, and the girl takes some time to think how to respond and start speaking. You see. So now the, uh, the the request has already been sent. Okay. First, initially the acknowledgement is sent, saying that yeah, I have received the request. Then, then the, the, the server takes some time to uh, understand what is the request, process the request, and it starts sending the response. It will take certainly some time for you to do all that. And once it starts sending the request, okay. Once it starts sending the request, you see uh, the server starts sending the request, and it may it may not be one packet. Okay, there could be lot of packets of response you might be getting. Okay, there are lot of packets of response that you get. Okay, from the server. Okay, the, whatever the response that you get, it will not be at one go. Okay, so the response will be in the form of packets, and it will be multiple packets of response the server will send, and once the client reaches the first packet. Okay, as soon as the client gets that first packet, you see the client has received the first packet, the, the server has started sending the response, the client has received that first packet. Okay, that time is server time to first buffer. What is the time? Server time to first buffer. Okay, and then the, the, the server continues to send all that response and the client receives the complete response. Okay, and so the client has received the last byte of it last byte of it now the whole response has been received by the client the client has received all the byte let's say the server is sending 100 100 data packets as soon as they receive the first data packet okay you see receive the first buffer with so first packet that is what we call it as a server time to first buffer server time to first buffer and then once the client receives the 100th packet that is when you receive the last byte and this time is what we call the server receives the last byte and this time we call it as a download time. And this time we call it as a download time. Okay, you see this is the network time to first buffer. This is the time server time to first buffer wherein the client has received the first byte 
and uh, the client has received the last byte. This is the dump. This is the dump. Okay. Are we clear with this picture, guys? All of you. Are we clear with this picture, all of you? Okay. If you understand this and you talk about this in the interview, this will this will do wonders. Okay. Okay. So Divakar. Okay. Maria to Raghu. Okay. Gautam. Agos. Scott. Uh, Athena. Okay. So have you understood all of you? Please let me know. Okay. So let's talk about it. First, the client has supposed to send the request. So what did you do? You type facebook.com. The client doesn't know where to send the request or which web server it needs to send the request. So what does the client do? It will send the request to the DNS server. DNS server has all the information and it will tell you it has the information of the IP address of the Facebook as well. So the DNS server will send you the IP address, which is 195.168. And this type, uh, please mute yourself. Yes, if you have a question, yes, you can unmute and you can speak. Do you have a question, yes, somebody who have unmuted? You have a question, please, please let me. Okay. So if not, please mute yourself. Okay. So you got it. So this time that it has taken to get the IP address of the Facebook, it's called DNS resolution. And once the client receives that IP address, it knows where to send the request. But to send the request first, it has to establish the connection between uh, the web server, which is 195.168.0.1. So it established the connection uh, for between 195 uh, with, with the web server, which is 195.168.0.1. It established the connection. Why? Only if the connection is established, it can send the request and it can receive the so the time that it takes for you to establish the connection with the web server and the client, that time is what we call as a pitch. Okay, are we clear so far, everybody? Are we clear so far, everybody? I want to hear from all the eight students. Okay, now once the connection is established, now the communication can happen between client and server. So what does the client will do? It will send a request. The client will send a request. Whatever the request it has to send, it will send a request. Okay, it has sent a request. Now, once the request has been sent, the server, what it will do, it will not, it will not start sending the response immediately. First, it will send acknowledgement, acknowledgement saying that I have received your request. Hold on, I will process your request. I will understand your request, create the response, and send it back to you. It will take a little bit of time, but I'll send you the acknowledgement initially saying that okay i have received your request okay that acknowledgement immediately the server sends you and that time is nothing but network time to first move on. you have not received the response you have just received the acknowledgement saying that i have received the request okay so uh, i'll tell you that okay uh, uh, i can give you one example recently uh, Hang on, I'm just thinking of an example how I can give you here. Okay. Okay. Um, I can't tell you so many. Uh, that example is very, very complicated. I can't uh, give you that example. Uh, okay. I've applied for a broadband connection at my office. Okay. With Hathaway. So I've paid the money. They immediately I got acknowledgement saying that you have paid the money, we have received the money, and your connection will be you get your broadband connection in two days. Okay. I just got the acknowledgement saying that the payment is successful and we have received your request, but we will process your request of broadband connection in two days. So after two days, somebody came to my premises and then gave me the broadband connection. So the first acknowledgement that I got from Hathaway. I didn't get the broadband connection. I just got the acknowledgement saying that your payment is done. You will get your broadband connection in two days. Did you understand, Divakar? Did you understand, Divakar? Okay. So you're saying that I have applied for that broadband connection. Immediately, I didn't got the broadband connection. I got the acknowledgement saying that the payment is successful, but you get your Hathaway broadband connection in two days. So that's what here. Okay. As soon as the sender request, server is sending acknowledgement said, yes, I got your request. It will take for some time for me to process your request and once it is processed, we will send you the response. So that is what is the acknowledgement. So this is nothing but network time to first offer. 
here, if there is any issues, the issue could be with the network because the server is not taking any time to process the request. The server is just sending that question, saying that we have sent that, we have received that request. So if this time is more, then there is an issue with the network. Okay. Then server, what it will do? It will start understanding the request. All these three servers together will understand the request, will process the request, and it will start sending the and it will start sending the response. Okay, and it will start sending the response. As it sends the request, as it sends the response, the first byte that you receive, as soon as the client will receive the first byte, you see there is let's say uh, 50 KB, let's say uh, one uh, one MB of data. Okay, uh, sorry. So the response is, let's say, one MB. The response that the server is sending to the client is one MB of data. All that one MB of data will not be there in one packet. This one MB of data could be there in maybe 100 packets or 200 packets. Okay? The server will create the response and start sending this one MB of data to the client. So it will be in multiple data. Uh, it will be in multiple data packets, and all all will not be in concurrent. It will be in uh, uh, one after another. So as soon as you receive the first packet, as soon as you receive the first packet, okay, that, that time is nothing but server type to first buffer. Okay, server type to first buffer. And both these together, we call it as TTFP, time to first buffer. TTFP, okay, time to first buffer. What is TTFP? Time to first buffer is nothing but network time plus the server. Okay, network time plus the server time. So as soon as the server has created the response and sending the response to the client, it will not be in one go. It will be in multiple packets, which will be one after another. So once the client receives the first packet, that is nothing but you see that the client received the first packet and that is nothing but the server time. And it is the server, the client will continue to receive the response. And then let's say there are 100 packets. And after certain period of time, it has received the 100 packet. And this is when it has received the 100 packet. And this is nothing, you see, receives the last byte. And this is nothing but the download time. This is nothing but the download time. Okay, Divakar, are we clear now? Are we clear now? Everybody else? Everybody else? This is very, very important for you to understand. Yes. If you're going to talk about all this TTFB, tell me what is the analysis you have done. Yes. Okay. I've captured the network time. I've looked at the server time, which is the TTFB. I've looked at the download time, connection time, and resolution time. Let's say now I'll tell you the most important thing. Okay. All this together is nothing but your transaction response time. All of this together is nothing but the transaction response time. Okay. For example, for the login, for the login, okay. Okay, forget about the login. Okay, let's look look at the dashboard report that we are looking at. Okay. Okay, so for the login home page, okay, it is taking 6.3 seconds. Okay, so it is taking 6.3 seconds. Okay. Okay, so for the login home page, uh, launch page, okay, for the launch page, okay, for the launch page, how much time it has taken? 6.3 seconds or something it has taken. That's 6.3 seconds, okay, which is the transaction response times. Out of this 6.3 seconds, some of them will be resolution time, little bit of it will be connection time, little bit of its network time, little bit of its server time, little bit of its Okay, so let's say out of this 6.3 seconds, 0.1 seconds is uh, uh, DNS resolution. Let's say 0.1 is connection time. Okay, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay, let's say 0.5 seconds is the network time. So how much time is that 0.1? How much time we are done so far? 1, 2, 7, 7. And let's say the server time is, let's say, uh, points, no, and let's say it is 2 seconds. Okay, let's say 2 seconds. So, so far, how much? Two point, let's say, uh, yeah, two seconds. So two point five, two point six, two point seven, six point three minus two point seven. How much it will be? Approximately three point five seconds is over here. Okay. So if you add up all of this, point one, point one, point five, two, and three point five, it should add up to six. Okay. Let's round it up to six, guys. Okay. Let's to make my calculations easy. Let's say overall is six seconds. Out of which this is point one, this is point one. Let's say this is point seven. Uh, sorry, point eight. Let's say it is point eight. Okay.
Okay, so the launch page overall, let's assume the launch page overall, let's assume it has taken six seconds, the launch transaction, the launch page home transaction, let's say it has taken six seconds. Okay, in the six seconds, let's say point one is the DNS resolution time, point one is the uh, connection time, point eight is layer for, let's say, uh, network time to first buffer. Okay, let's say this is one second, and then two seconds is the server time, and three seconds is the download time. So you add up all of this, how much it becomes? 0.1 plus 0.1 is 0.2, 0.2 plus 0.8 is one second, one plus two is three seconds, three plus three is six seconds, okay? So now you can right away tell to the developer that the download time is more, okay? You need to do something about the download time so that the overall response time is decreased. Also the server time is also more, so server time is more, which means that two seconds is more. So your servers are taking two seconds to process your request. Then definitely there is an issue over here. Okay, so you need to work or uh, there could be some bottleneck over here. Let's say this is taking less time itself, but let's say this is taking more time. Then there is some issue with the network. Look at your network cards. Okay, let's say this time is more then there is an issue with the connection time. Do something about it. Let's say this take this might this will never take more time because this is the DNS server, so it will be typically faster. Are we clear, guys? All of you? Are we clear, all of you? Okay, this is how you can look at the okay. Now, now, okay, one more thing I'll tell you. Okay. So <clears throat> okay, in low runner language, in low runner language, okay. So you see DNS resolution time plus connection time plus both of them plus network time plus server time plus download time. All of this is nothing but the response times. All of this minus the download time is nothing but the latency. Okay, this time is nothing but the latency in low runners language. Okay, this time is nothing but the latency. Till here, till here. This time is nothing but the latency in the low runners language. Okay, in the low runner language, this is nothing but the latency. Okay, latency. L A T N C Y. Okay, latency. Okay, are we clear this? Okay, this is nothing but the latency. Latency plus download time is nothing but your overall response time. Overall response time. Okay, are we clear this all of it? Okay, so in load runners language, okay. So what is the first one then? DNS time. Okay, DNS time. DNS time. What is the second one then? Somebody please unmute yourself and speak. Connection time. Okay. What is the third one then? Network, network time to first buffer. Network time to first buffer. Okay. Let me call it as a network time. Or let's say network time to first buffer. Then what? This is first buffer network. Okay. Server time to first buffer. Is that right? Yes. Is that right then? Server time to first buffer. Yeah, server time to first buffer. Plus, finally, download. Download time. Okay, download. All of this is nothing but your transaction response. Okay, so this transaction response time minus download time is nothing but your latency in load in J. This is what they call it as latency in J. Are we clear yes, all of you? Are we clear? Or you can say that latency is nothing but, okay, uh, DNS time, DNS lookup time, plus connection time, plus server time to first buffer. Let me just call it a server time, plus length. Okay, plus length. time is nothing but latency. If latency is more, it could be because of all this. Okay. Are you clear with all of you? All of you? Okay. Wonderful. So in this graph, that's what we are looking at, the latency. Okay, the latency. I'll wrap up the class shortly, guys. Okay, let me cover this one. There are only two more graphs that are there. So tomorrow we will go through the other graphs which are there in the throughput and response times. Today is not the time. So tomorrow there is a class, and then though it's Saturday, we will cover this graphs and we'll try to cover uh, the the the, the, the the, uh, what is that? Um, J, J, okay. So latency, latency, okay. So let me filter all this again, okay. Hide all, and let me look at for only launch, launch transaction, okay. And here is the latency over a period of time. 
initially the latency time is thousand seconds okay after after that it is more and then it, this is what it is over the period of time okay this is what it is for the period of time okay so let's compare this latency over a period of time with the response time scales okay so watch here carefully for the same launch transaction i'm looking at the response time and for the same launch transaction i'm looking at the uh, i'm looking at the latency okay now let me take the screenshot of this slipping through okay let's compare these two things guys okay let's compare these two let's put side by side okay it's a little hard to put side by side okay, what i'll do is i'll copy this into a word document okay so that i can put side by side okay so i'll take the snapshot of uh, latency as well here is the latency okay so let's let's look at side by side and watch this very carefully guys okay now look at it guys so this for the same launch transaction both of them you see 843 let's observe okay in 843 what is the overall response times for this launch transaction can somebody tell me at exactly 843 what is the, the average transaction response times for this launch transaction can somebody unmute yourself and tell me okay what is the response time scale approximately 6.250 6.50 somewhere in between uh, 6.4 yeah yeah 6.4 6.4 exactly at 843 the overall response at time is 6.4 okay exactly at 843 what is the latency guys what is the latency what is the latency it exactly 8.4 can i say 9.3 seconds yeah yeah okay so 6.4 is the overall response times okay okay in 843 okay in 843 exactly in 843 what is the response time 6.4 seconds okay and what is the latency what is the latency guys 9.3 latency 9.3 seconds okay 9.3 seconds okay now you can clearly know that okay so what is the issue over here what is that it is taking a lot of time okay so sorry it is what point nine not nine point three point nine three okay let me just say point okay point nine three or point okay now you see okay latency is point nine seconds which means that DNS time plus connection time plus server time plus network time how much it is taking just less than one second okay but overall response time is six point four so what is the culprit here guys which time is the culprit here DNS time or connection time or network time to first buffer or server time to first buffer or download time, which is Down, causing the problem. With download time. Download time is the issue. Okay, immediately you have to talk to the developer saying that how you are downloading all that information. Are you zipping it and sending it to the client or without zipping it? If you are zipping it, make sure that, that what you are you are zipping it, but still it is taking a lot of time. You know, watch. Okay, you are downloading a lot of information. Or maybe there is some issue with the download. Okay, maybe you have forgot to download. So the, these guys now will concentrate where to, uh, where is the issue and what needs to be done. Here clearly you need to understand that there is no issue with the connection, there is no issue with the DNS, there is no issue with the server time. Okay, server time is the time taken for the server to understand the request, process the request, keep the response ready, and also there is no issue with the network also. So the issue is with the download itself. Maybe there is a lot of data to be downloaded from the server to the client, or when you are downloading, you haven't zipped it enough, or there could be some issue. Right the way, you can tell us the download is there. Download is there. Are you clear with all of you? Or maybe you are downloading a lot of data from the server, and the network is not so good. Okay, so now you know where the problem is. Are we clear with all of you? Uh, uh, Kumar, uh, this one. Uh... Is there any uh, standard timings for the uh, latency? Like uh, within that, this could be. Okay, two seconds, all this could be under two seconds. 
Okay, so typically what happens in my observation, okay, there is no standard time that this is this is what it should be. Okay, if the SLA says that for launch transaction, the response time should be less than two seconds, what does it mean? Okay, what does it mean? Okay, the, the DNS time plus connection time plus server time plus network time plus download time should be less than two seconds. Okay, typically DNS and connection time will be fraction of a second, 0 0.00 seconds or 0 0.01 seconds or something like that. It is very, very less. Okay, typically what? Okay, there is a network time. Hang on. Okay, typically, okay, typically server time will be more. Okay, network time will also be very, very less because it is just sending the request and you're receiving the acknowledgement. So typically what I have seen is, okay, what I have seen is out of all these times, in my experience, okay, 99% of the times, okay, 99% of the times, okay, these times will be very, very less, okay, maybe all these three to be, will be less than 0.1 seconds or 0.2 seconds, most of the time will be server time because this is the time for which the server needs to understand, process the request and serve the response time. 95% of the times it is an issue with the server because this is the time when the server is actually processing your request. So if there is an issue with the web server or the database server or the application server, it will show up. Okay. Download time will also be very less because people usually developers are smart enough to zip all the information that they have to send it to the server and send it to the server. So 90% of the times you see the issue with the server time. Uh, 1.2 seconds and this should be depending upon totally how much data you are downloading let's say you are downloading fancy images from the server you know all those uh, fancy stuff from the server then the download time will be little more okay so also people say the sick what you download in the server don't download too much information as well. okay so typically most of the time out of this two seconds that we are looking at okay so overall response time should be approximately two seconds right maybe 1.8 seconds or 1.5 seconds with the server time this is my observation okay yeah okay. Mm. Yeah, uh, this one. Um, you you are divided the you are divided latency into multiple uh, transactions like DNS time, connection time, network time, so, server time. Don't don't confuse this with transaction. Overall, all of this will be transaction response. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. I have not divided. That's how it happens. Once a request and the response needs to be there, this is the process. For DNS needs to be established. Hang on, hang on. Once. Okay. Connection needs to be established. Then network needs to be fine. Then the server will process the request, and then you will download it. So okay. all of this will make a transaction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, like in that uh, individual, uh, like I, I need to know only the server time. Is it possible? Uh, with the load runner, it is possible. With the JMeter, you can get all of this and this separately. Connection time also it is giving. Just just saw that uh, if you see, uh, okay, you see latency over time and then you see connection over time. Connection time also it is giving. Okay. okay. And look at the connection time. You see, this is also 0.7 seconds. Okay, average connect time in milliseconds, so it's approximately 0 0.7 seconds. Connection time, but uh, if it was load runner, it would actually give you this all of this okay so it will give you each one separately how much time it is taken for dns how much time this for connection network time server time and download time here it is giving all of this together and this also separately since all of this is given and this one is given you can calculate the download time and the connection time is also it is giving okay so uh, you can get uh, and dns time will be very very less so you can get this time in jmeter you can get this time you see latency minus the connection time, you can get the time to first buffer. These two together is what we call it as time to first buffer. So in JMeter, you can calculate the time to first buffer. You can calculate the download time and it is giving the connection time as well. Assuming that DNS time is very, very less. Are we clear? Divakar? I hope it was Divakar who was speaking or Raghu. Who was it? Raghu Raghu. Okay. So this is what it is. So load runner, uh, JMeter is also giving this, but load runner each one separately clearly it will be. Okay. 
here we will stop the class tomorrow we will go through these two graphs and also while the test is execution kumar can i see these graphs yes we can see these graphs while the test is going on i'm going to show you that tomorrow how to look at these graphs while the test is going on and then uh, we will go and uh, look at the jenkins uh, tomorrow is important in the interviews they are asking this jenkins integration almost every interview they are asking this okay are we fine guys can we wrap up the class any questions pending I'm going to send this report to you on the chat window. I mean, on the group. Okay, I've sent those reports as well. You can have a have a look at the reports to understand what is going on. Okay. So, can we wrap up, guys? Can we wrap up today? Yeah. Can you send the recorded sessions? I'll share the recorded sessions, however, guys. Okay. Okay. Definitely, uh, every day, right? I said I didn't listen to record it. Uh, who is this speaking? Divakar. Sorry? Divakar. Divakar, yesterday I have sent it. I mean, you should get it. I'm on Divakar, just look at it. So, guys, yesterday you didn't receive the recorded videos. Can somebody please confirm? Somebody else in the class? Anita has sent, I mean, I, she usually keeps in look. I would know if the recorded video is. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday I received. May 23rd. Yeah, yeah, yeah I received. And it is done on Saturday. And you should be there in the loop, Divakar. So, Divakar, your uh, email address? This is yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, I've sent it to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Uh, like Kumar, hello. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, th this one, uh, uh, you did uh, uh, this analyzation, right? Using this uh, graph. Right. Yeah, this analyzation is responsible for uh, performance testers or performance engineers. Usually, this basic analysis, we can do it. No, no what an issue. Just now I told you what is the latency, what is the network time, what is the time, overall response times. This basic analysis, you can put all these graphs together and give your observations. In my case right now, I feel that the download time is more. So I'll just put it, my observation that based on the observation, the latency is so-and-so time and response times is so-and-so time. So, uh, you know, the download time is more. So look at uh, what you're downloading. So you can put those basic information. So basic analysis, basic observations is our responsibility. In-depth analysis, typically performance engineers will do. Okay. Okay. Can we close the sessions, guys? Okay. Thank you.